What's up, it's Kit. It's time for another video. Still have the same shirt on because it's the same day from the other videos. All right, so um, I'm actually doing a series of videos now so that I would be able to publish them slowly over the course of about 10 days because I'm not going to be here. So by the time you guys are watching this, I'm going to be somewhere in the tropics uh, sunning myself like a lizard. All right, so today... I'm gonna bust out one of these. This is uh, quite an old jig. And this is a 90 gram. Um, not quite the biggest. Actually, you know what? Just a second. Alright, perfect. I hate green. So what's gonna happen more than likely is that I am going to take the paint off of that and make something out of it because today I'm gonna be rigging a slow rocker from Storm. Uh, for you guys in the US, tough luck. Very good jig. Very, very good jig. And uh, you don't have it there. So... There are places in the world that have this. I don't know if it's still in circulation, but this is really a very good jig. The problem is, um, because of its shape, you can't really use it in um, swift water. Okay, It takes so long for this to actually go down to the bottom, and you really have to have a lot of good finger control to be able to stop it from... Um, to be able to kind of stop it from fluttering, all right? Now, this is the Storm Gomoku Slow Rocker. Let us take this out of the packet. And if I manage to find another one of these, I will, or this particular size actually, what I will do is um, salvage the hook because this hook is really really good now the reason why I am doing this is because uh, this is an example of how you could rig this jig with only two hooks and mind you this is 120 grams and this is tiny okay literally one of my favorite jigs and this is one of uh, the jigs that you can go bottom fishing with now uh, if you manage across this jig word of advice this hook you can salvage but um, take it off okay take it off I mean even this this uh, this uh, split ring take it off okay you are buying the jig and VMC was kind enough to give you something free so just take the jig rig the jig all right now um, this is an old this is an old jig and the manufacturing from this uh, is from the uh, old factory and the finish isn't too good. The newer ones though, the finish was actually really good. So I can tell that this one's actually one of the old batch. Alright, so 120 and it's very small. Now the, the good thing about this is that if you have something like this and you're in a situation where you want to drop something compact to attract fish that may not be, uh, let, let's say they may not be attracted to uh, big jigs. This is a perfect jig for it because it's small, it's compact. All right, so again, 120. Now imagine this jig is also 120. So the difference here, 
okay just for your reference you can see here all right so very very compact right now uh, let's go ahead and rig this I will be using pike and this is uh, 2-0 okay now let's see here the sizing okay so there's the middle of the jig right there you can see you put the hook there and you can see that when the hook is actually in this bit right here uh, it sticks out a bit like that that's how we size and determine now this will be sitting here in this position right here so we won't have uh, assist hooks or we won't have this assist hook uh, done too long okay so there's gonna be two it's gonna be that now if you have a single hook okay this is about a 6-0 and uh, that's their rig you could do a single hook on this and it works well so uh, if you see here okay again like that and it's uh, it's six sticks out quite a few uh, quite a bit on this one is it wrong no they determined it and uh, that's it but remember you have one hook so having the gape larger okay and and uh, protrude more is actually advantageous for you but since we're tying with two hooks we can get away with hooks that are a bit smaller okay so again pike and it is 2-0 I wonder if I should just... anyway so let's go ahead and do this uh, hold on I have an, another option here let's see uh, six five four okay let's see here So it's just difference huh? from from one brand to another just as an example you can see here that it's almost as big as the Pike 2O and this is a size 4O so I think we're gonna be using these instead uh, I could go this is 4O's I could go with the 5 I could go with the 6 but I think 4 is is okay now the reason why I'm going with these is that the wire on these are actually thinner and they're just as strong but since uh, these hooks were made custom for me um, we'll try them all right so again just so okay you see it there sticks out a good bit and we have two so that's great now we zoom in so that you guys can see exactly what we're doing here okay now um, if you're new to the channel this channel talks about the hows and whys of fishing we cover everything from big game ultralight everything in the middle including fly fishing and today we are tying a an assist hook for the uh, a custom assist hook for the Storm Gomoku Slow Rocker. And with this, we're going to go all out with the red. So, I'm going to be using the red assist cord that we have here. Okay. And I am taking uh, just a bit, just a tad bit, because we don't want it long. So basically, this is also a video of how to tie a, an assist hook for a jig type that is small and stubby. So you can't really put four hooks on this, even if you wanted to. So, we are putting in uh, 
two, just two. Now, we have fluorocarbon, and I am going to be spooling, or I'm going to be inserting fluorocarbon in this uh, cord right here. This is 13, well, let's say it's 15 pound test. All right, uh, 15 pound test fluorocarbon. You could use uh, smaller sizes, of course. You could use bigger sizes as well, but for this particular instance, we are using 15 pound test. I'm sure if we test this properly, it over tests, so I'm, I'm, I'm calling 15 pound. Even if the label actually says 13, 13.2, more than likely it's going to over test. Okay, now. Alrighty, so we have we have the thread or we have the insert okay we will do our wraps like so I have I've actually put a tag end of the mono to the tip now see like that now I'm gonna zoom in more so that you can see what I'm doing okay and then we have our super glue and we will apply jeez Louise we apply the super glue Okay. Spread the glue. If you have excess, just a napkin right here. Take that. Okay. So, then proceed to binding. And the binding, again, I keep on explaining this because there are a lot of new guys. If you do it like this, it's going to be very, very clean. But also, you run the risk of the uh, binding coming off, the, the cord coming off of the binding. So, there's several techniques that are employed here. The binding that I'm doing is very, very tight. <coughs> Also, we are pushing the super glue between the shank and the wraps. Okay, so once we have the uh, the wraps tight, we take our bodkin. In this case, I'm using a needle right here, and we spread the super glue onto the wraps like so it's not final yet what you're doing is just making sure that it's spread correctly and then from there you wrap okay you could do a whip finish like I'm doing here or you could do a 
uh, multi multiple uh, half hitches all right okay So the glue is not dry yet and as you can see there, it's uh, not too clean. So let's fix that. There's some fuzz which I will just burn off and then we could do now is actually re-glue everything and make sure that the whole the wraps are protected so uh, I rarely do this but since we're already here I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, glue this so that you see this whole thing the whole process done from start to finish and like I mentioned there's more more than likely there's gonna be new guys coming in and uh, let's just do that for their benefit okay so make sure that it is spread evenly and coated all right now from here what we need to do is basically just wait for it to dry up there's two ways to do this uh, either you wait or you spray it with Uh, accelerant accelerant like what we're doing here okay that thing is dry okay that's bone dry as you can see there all right now while it's still wet what you could do is just wipe it down and uh, if you've done it right it's gonna be pretty clean now that that's done We can go ahead and put the other hook. <clears throat> now, since you actually have seen um, the close up of this, I will make the view a bit wider so that you'd be able to see on a much bigger scale how it's done okay so we put a base of thread and this will this will keep the cord from slipping and we mount first few wraps it's tight but it is designed or we're putting it there so that the uh, the cord doesn't slip see so less wraps means it's going to slip when you are tying what you want is to wrap it in such a way that when you tug on it it's not gonna slip that way when you are tying you know it's not gonna move okay so do that the mono tag I purposely left a bit long but now we're cut it short like that okay so I'm gonna zoom in so that you could see. So the the tag here, you could see, actually kind of long. You could see it. I'm gonna cut it short, just like right there. Okay. Let's see if I can zoom in a bit more before it changes focus. Okay, there we go. So you could see that that tag is a bit long right there I'm gonna cut it short just like that okay now 
you can see the tag and what we're gonna do is also tie it in and this this is the same process as we did with the other one I like doing this so that it has a natural taper okay and then go back and we're hitting the the end of the cord right there so that again we're able to make a nice taper okay there we go and basically we are just securing this so now even if I tugged on this it's not gonna move okay so that's it for that now I'm gonna take a piece of masking tape and I'm using orange just so I can see it clearly it doesn't help with the shirt of course thank you to Sea Falcon by the way but we're gonna tape it like so so we don't get in trouble okay I've stabbed myself hundreds of times over the course of so many years doing assist hooks and I found that a uh, masking tape works wonders all right so you tape it so that the hook point is pointing away that way when you're tying even if you're using force if you manage to hook it there's no edge there's no point that will snag okay so now that we have this okay we will put glue uh, I have to say we are taking a bit longer than usual for this usually when I'm uh, just tying this production style uh, it, it goes faster obviously because I'm not explaining so you can see here how strong the uh, the co the uh, the tension is when I'm putting the line on okay so this is really really tight as I mentioned there's no stopper for this style of tying and if you don't have a stopper things tend to slip so what we're doing here is actually forcing the glue onto the cord and the shank and what happens is hopefully we will fuse all of this in one single strong unit so that the cord does not separate from the shank okay there you go do that and then we do our finishing knot so you might have noticed that we are not putting flash if I was fishing this in shallow water I would put flash but this particular one is going to be used in deep water so there's no need to uh, put flash now we will spread the glue on the outside to ensure that everything is covered like so now we take super glue and apply so that this whole wrap that we've just done will be encased and protected okay don't worry about the excess yet because the whole thing isn't covered so make sure it's spread around like so don't forget the tips drag it down to the shank like so as you can see just about enough for this make sure that there's even coverage okay that looks good now if we weren't in a hurry I just leave this to cure naturally and the moisture in the air dries everything but since we're in a tight schedule here there's a bit of excess so I'm just gonna take that off with the uh, tissue here we could just splash this like so and that whole thing will actually dry up okay see and all we need to do now is uh, just clean it up because uh, 
you know, sometimes white stuff just uh, appears. That's because of the reaction of the uh, reaction of the uh, accelerant with the super glue. So right there, as you can see, that's pretty clean. Okay, now we take off. We take off the masking tape. And majority of the time, it'll it'll actually fight you. So just be very careful and be forewarned that sometimes it's a nightmare to take off. All right, so now we have we have the assembly without a solid ring. So let's go ahead and uh, take the solid ring. Now, uh, you look at the eye, see the size right there. All we have to do is match that somewhat. Here we go. Okay, so I chose that. Uh, let me actually show you zoomed in, see? Okay size all right that tells me that it's actually it actually matches the jig so let's go ahead and do that we take this okay put them on the the uh the same plane like this okay instead of opposing each other okay like so all right now we take the ring insert the ring we go like so turn go over like so and then we tighten as easy as that make sure that everything's even tighten um, if you want you could actually offset this but over the years I actually found it doesn't matter for for this particular jig so we're just gonna we're just gonna tighten it normally like so make sure okay alrighty like that we'll do one at a time and see that is tight as can be another one same thing okay this other one needs to there we go that should do it both in bang and we have a perfectly made assist hook right there okay all that needs to be done is to insert it like so now you can do this short you could do this a bit long for this particular one what i've done was to actually make it so that it is just a little bit past the uh, midpoint here but the object of this is to give a lot of coverage to this one jig now since this is short when the fish strikes it's going to pretty much swallow the whole thing all right not like a long jig where it will bite the head part right here but because this is short what happens is that when the fish swallows it's gonna swallow everything so keep that in mind when you're when you're doing this particular jig okay uh, easily one of my favorites we will 
put, we will install a load bearing assist hook. Uh, sorry, a load bearing split ring on this because the split ring actually will have an impact and it will carry load. So we put a load bearing split ring and then put our assist hook. And by the way, you know, in one of the videos when I said that there would be finicky tuna, that's when I would use this. So if I use this on those tuna, when they're really, when, when they're weird, when they're acting weird, okay, I could either use this with two hooks or I could opt to uh, copy the original assist hook, put a single hook with flash and a single bigger hook, all right? And uh, that'll work really well on tuna. Now, here's the thing, okay? This is one of the jigs where I would be doing something like this. And I know a lot of you guys have been waiting for this. Okay, so we'll do that. So in this kind of configuration, we could fish for schooly yellowfin tuna as well as those weird long tails. And there we go. So we have a swivel. And the swivel actually makes this wobble a lot more. Okay. Here we go. That's how I rig a 120 gram slow rocker. And I have to admit, this size actually doesn't see a lot of action. The ones that actually see a lot of actions are a lot of action is actually the smaller 40 gram one. And that was, that was quite a hit. But for this particular one, it's going to see a lot of action for uh, yellowfin tuna near the uh, gunship. Or it'll work together with this on those really strange um, long tails. But instead of using a fast jig, I'll be using a slow jig. And this is the one right here. I am also going to be repainting the green one that I showed you earlier. Just this one. <laughs> and this is a 90 gram, which is also perfect for that particular use. It's just that I don't like green, so I'm going to be rigging this as well. Alright, so if you have questions, go ahead and uh, drop them in the comment section. And I'll make sure to answer them. Uh, possibly even while I'm uh, out in the Philippines. So I'm, I'm going to be check, checking in on these videos. And I'm going to be commenting uh, on the videos if I have time. Uh, if not, then it's going to be when I get back. Alright, so... I'm going to be making a few of these videos and they will be released intermittently while I'm away. Alrighty, so that's it. Uh, again, if you're new to the channel, um, click on that subscribe button if you want to learn more. If you want to share this with your friends, learn together, share it. Click on the share button, share it with your friends. And uh, if you learned something, give it a thumbs up. Alrighty, that's it for now. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Class dismissed.